Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Ulysses Solomon Archer. Welcome in to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm your host, Zach, joined by the, and I was trying to figure out which one of the siblings I was going to give you, mm-hmm. uh, but I'll say joined by the Quicksilver to my Scarlet Witch, Mike. Okay, which Quicksilver? Um, well, I was just assuming the fact that they're brother and sister, so I mean, whichever Quicksilver okay, you want to pick. We're talking comic Quicksilver, though, not, yes. not TV movie Quicksilver, because um, there's two of those. Well, they were, and I feel like both Quicksilvers were okay. Like, I don't think that yeah. one of the Quicksilvers was bad. I, just, I think the Quicksilver that ended up uh, in the uh, Scarlet Witch thing, um, he's got a weird face. He, well, he was kick-ass, too. Right. I can't ever think of him and not think of American Horror Story, also. Is he in that? Yeah. Okay. Which I'm not a big fan of. And really? So, yeah. I just I like the first one. That was about it. Okay. Yeah. I know people who think otherwise, but I mean that's fine. Everybody to each his own. Obviously, <laughs> I'm not. I, I, and I don't mean you that can like usually me. say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I know people who that, think otherwise. I, I felt like that was some kind of passive aggressive way for me to like you know <laughs> like, snap well, back you at suck. you too. But no, I don't watch it. No, so no, it's no, just, no, no, no. It was fine. It was yeah. Fine. No. Uh, I just so, that that guy who makes it uh, Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Um, Nip Tuck, Glee. Um, he has American like a horror story. yeah, and he has All like a it. he does a little uh, a lot of little like short things too, like mm-hmm. short series mm-hmm. or movies and stuff. Well, I think he did that Hollywood on Netflix. Yeah, he did the one. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. um, my issue with him is he 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 is a great writer. He's a good showrunner. All that kind of stuff. He, I think he's either self conscious or something where. Like he never thinks he has enough characters, and so there are as always the seasons of... go on, or as the stories get bigger, there's a million characters and there's fourteen storylines. Yeah, for like a vampire story, I'm like, what? Why do we have so many? Yeah, okay. But it's been the same that. in every show he does. It's it's exactly. The I same. can at least appreciate it just because there's not a lot of them around anymore. Sure. A good anthology series yeah, yeah, like yeah, he's yeah, doing, yeah. absolutely. Um, with the American Horror Story franchise, it's... and I will say I've not watched this new one. You know, where it's American uh, Horror Stories. Oh, yeah. I haven't yeah, either. I have where a, it's more episodic. Again, I have a sister-in-law who loves uh, the show, yeah, and she watches yeah, them all. Yeah. So she's enjoyed it so far. But uh, hopefully if you are an American Horror Story fan, I guess you're enjoying the latest season. <laughs> we don't watch it, so we I can't tell never, you it's... I don't know. I, I, I used to be a big fan of his stuff. but Well, and it, it's one of those things, too, where... Tuck goes to Florida. <laughs> oh, now there's a midget. Now there's an alligator eating somebody. I mean, it just... Boom, 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 boom. Too many things. See, the one that Quit got it. me, again, is because my wife watches them a lot, too. Yeah. So that's the people, like, there's people in my life that watch them sure, a lot, so I sure. hear about them. Right. But I remember her watching the Freak Show one. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I feel so bad because I can't remember his actual name right now. Mm-hmm. But the guy who played Drew Carey's brother, yeah, um, he's in Zodiac too, and he's really good in Zodiac. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the bald he, guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's the clown. Mm-hmm. In and he the does a great fr- job. He does a fantastic yeah. job. Yeah, but it cre- it you know makes me un- I just unsettled. There's mm-hmm. two things that I have had a fear of, and it's not really a fear. It's not like if I see. A clown in purse i'm gonna freak out or anything mm-hmm. like that right, right. but there's just it's always just a little bit of unsettledness inside of me and i think that comes from mike you didn't know you're gonna be my therapist today i think that comes <laughs> from when i was a child and i was traumatized by clowns then sure. like i hated sure. going to the circus because really? of it yeah huh. so i see that now i've just and never I, had that, that I, I don't know i can and uh i appreciate and be like man he is very creepy and he's doing a good job and then that feeling inside me is like, he's probably being too creepy. I don't want to watch this. Yeah, sure. sure. So, that there. That, I think there is an issue um, somewhere if you want to put on all that makeup and dress up and well, act I've, like that. I've I mean, made, I say it as a joke because obviously I know that there are great people out there who dress up as clowns to, you know, help with, with great things. No, like they're they, all they, terrible. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I'm, my my joke has just always been like I can't trust somebody who doesn't want to be themselves. That's well, that's true. So I mean, Halloween is is one thing, but to do it all the time, yeah. that's a, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like 
you know, like I want to feel like I would feel the same way about uh, a superhero, like if they were real. Yeah. You know why? Why you got the why you got the costume on, man? You know, just just help me lift this car off my granny. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Like, why did we have to wait for you to go change out? Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We don't have any phone booths. Sorry. <laughs> what are we gonna do now? What does he do? Yeah. <laughs> what? Remember the first one of the first, uh, or maybe it was for Deadpool two. They had like that little three minute mm-hmm. like kind of thing, and it was where he was trying to change in. Right. The phone booth, and right. then the time it took him to change the guy he was trying to save and die. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it's All a right. good reference. So let's get back into some more comics. And I promised last week, I believe I called it a double feature of dumbassery. Sure. And just because I guess it's kind of alliteration and it sounded like a mm, cool name to go good. with. Yeah, I like it. What I have today, Mike, is two characters that I feel like we would get a blast out of talking about. Okay. But... You know, people don't want to listen to just a 10-minute episode. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to knock out both of them in one episode All right, here. sounds good. And to get things started off today, we are going to start with a man who is actually a, a pretty smart guy. Yeah. He's, he's a professor. Mm. His name's Orson Kasloff, right? Dr. Mm-hmm. Orson Kasloff. Okay. Now... Uh, Professor Kaslov here, brilliant chemist, right? Okay. Just super smart guy, considered by some to be like the cream of the crop when it came to chemists in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, he just didn't feel, though, that he was earning enough money mm. working in science, like he with was, his scientific work. He wanted that tenure. He wanted he wanted that <laughs> tenure. He wanted that sweet, sweet science money that he wasn't Why getting. There's so much that happens in the world of, of college and, it and did, tenure. It, you didn't realize that there's just so much, like so many mm. villains are just born from no the idea. fact they can't yeah, get tenure. No idea. Um, so basically, <laughs> since he can't make enough money, he has decided that I'm going to turn to a life of crime. Sure. Do you think that that all of this education based crime, um, do you think it comes from like comic book writers that maybe tried to be professors or something like that in their past, or they just think they're smarter than everybody else and ought to be teaching? I mean, you think that's where it comes from? I don't know if it comes from there as much <laughs> as I was always smarter than my professors. I do feel like it's obviously like a trope in some way because there are yeah. a lot of yeah. professors that are villains. Like even if you think of like you know Spider Man, Doctor Connors yeah. is the lizard. Absolutely, absolutely, um, that's the exact one. I was and you bring can up. go yeah. through. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Kurt Vonnegut. No, <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about. Uh, uh, oh, not Catch Twenty Two. What is he? All Quiet on the Western Front. Yeah, Isn't that a so. Kurt Vonnegut book? Yes, I don't know. Uh, Slaughterhouse Five, I maybe know, that. I think I that one names, is actually. I don't know. It's not all quite on. I think it's Slaughterhouse Five. But you caught me. I sounded smart for a uh, you second. You sounded and then, super smart, and then you were like, "Bam, bam." Well, no, no, I don't no know. but then I wanted. I needed to prove that I was smart too. So that's, <laughs> that's why I'm right. throwing out. That's yeah, right. That's it. To figure out books. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Man Bat is a scientist. Man and Batman. Bat. Like yeah. so, I think it's just a thing of like college professors. I think that all comic book writers are just like teachers aren't paid well enough. So yeah, sure. this could be something that why he does. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, trash guys aren't paid well either, right? I mean, that's true, but they never become super. That's villains. what I'm saying. I mean, well, why then don't are they? they? And again, this maybe they're tied in. This the isn't mob. us saying that. No. Well, that is true. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that sanitation jobs are still obviously not here? I don't think here in in Central Texas that I don't we've think got we have a lot of mob guys tied into the. Even well, though, but who knows? I mean, maybe you do see that waste management thing everywhere. Yeah. I, but who knows? Well, I man. thought that was the guy who owned Blockbuster at one point in time. Oh, maybe. Right? Maybe Isn't it's the, Kurt Vonnegut. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he's with us anymore. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Slaughterhouse Five, right? No, yes, uh, I think so, it is Slaughterhouse Five. <laughs> it's been forever. I was in high school when I read that. But uh, so back to uh, Orson Kozlov. Fahrenheit Five. 451. That's Ray Bradbury. <laughs> There you go. Do I sound smart enough yet? You do, yeah. You Sweet. really dropped those names. Welcome to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. Oh, yeah. A weekly discussion <laughs> where we talk about books. That's right. And how smart we are. That's right. So. I read a book. <laughs> that's it. Just one. That's it. <laughs> I read a Hank the Cowdog at one point in time. <laughs> so uh, he first attempts to break in to a bank. And okay. it's kind of failed just because he didn't consider the burglar alarms. Mm. He's not the smartest to be a professor. Sure. Um, he yeah. then decided that the problem is that he would do better with like a partner. Okay. Like it's easier to have a partner in crime. Hence sure. The phrase. Sure. 
So he tries to figure out and make contact with like the crim- the seedy criminal underworld mm. to try to find somebody to work with. No. Finds nothing. He can't figure it out at all. Doesn't know what to do. And then that's when that's he sees. That's one of those things where they probably think you're a narc when you come in looking for. Probably. You know. That's where he sees the human torch uh, stopping some crime and has a thought to himself. Well, if I defeat the human torch. Fantastic Four human torch? Yes. Johnny Blaze? Yes. Mm. If I defeat the human torch, then the rest of the criminal underworld will take notice. Mm, that's true, like, I then guess. Then they yeah. can't, yeah. They, they so can't say no. So you get the giant no. pail of water. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. <laughs> Those space blankets. His, since he's such a genius, Mike, uh-huh. he decides to buy an old castle, mm. and he uses parts and pieces in there to build a suit. Kind of like Iron Man in his cave. Kind of. But what would you wear a suit out of? Out if of you castle? were fighting the Human Torch, mm, I'd wrap myself in paper. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know what. What did he do? Um, I'll give you a clue. This came out in mm. August 1963. Okay, he wrapped himself in the Vietnam War. I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the doctor turns him to asbestos man. Oh, oh, I like that. So oh, that's fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, he makes the suit out of asbestos because obviously asbestos bad. It's, it's uh, flame retardant. Yeah, sure. Something so, retardant in there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, long story short, he's only around for uh, for <laughs> this. Man. Asbestos man. Yeah, so he got real sick. For, after that. Well, that's that's the thing. So uh, for. <laughs> He he is not able to defeat the Human Torch. Yeah, uh, it it does cause like obviously it's one of those in any comic book where you have that part of the arc where it's like, oh, the Human Torch is like I don't know how to defeat him, sure. and then give it a bit, and he'll sure. come back and find a way to sure. defeat him. It's a typical trope in a lot of stuff, and that's what happens here too. Like, yeah, he bests him the first time, but and then he, he does, gets so weak. <laughs> so he does turn him in. Well, the thing that I loved. Uh, about this, and I guess I should say that he is created by Stan Lee and Dick Ayers. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, what do you think it was that that like? It seems to be in the '60s, most well, late '50s, early '60s, I guess, where anytime they invented something, it was the best thing that's ever been invented. Yes, asbestos, it and it's so funny world. because obviously, looking at it now, yeah. Well, this isn't the last we hear of asbestos, man. I guess we're still like that, though. Oh, yeah. No, there's going to be something that we use right now. Well, the the apps and stuff is what I'm thinking of. Anytime a big app comes out, everybody's like freaks out. And then we find out, oh, it's been given the locations of all the children in the world to one guy or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, everything, like, there is going to be some, like, things that we do now that obviously give it 40 years and we'll all, that's how it is. Like, we can, we don't even have to go that far back. Yeah. I want to say meta. (laughs) I don't. I, I I was done using the platform in general, and then the name change happened. And yeah. I was just like, mm. "Did you see the? Did you see the fact that in in I believe it's Hebrew, it means dead? Really? <laughs> well, so they were all giving him crap the, about the fact that he renamed it Meta, and it means dead. That's funny. I, yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously, asbestos is one of those things. Zuckerberg strikes me as a comic book villain, though. Oh yeah, no. I he, mean, between him, Musk, and uh, Baldy. They, they they all are yeah oh very much dude so. Bezos they already even have the look that's what I'm saying Bezos already looks like Lex Luthor yeah 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 it's rough uh, we're, we're gonna we we need those superheroes Z- real quick it's funny and then Zuckerberg looks like Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor yeah yeah but that's probably just because just Jesse Eisenberg played him in. Well, I mean, he network. started he started his career by stealing something from somebody yeah at a university. Yeah. Where all villains are born. Well, you know what happened <laughs> is that uh, he was just trying to get tenure. The guy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, I don't teach here, but I need tenure. But the beauty is we're not done with this best. Sure. Man. Okay. Sorry. He makes an appearance. Uh, I'm trying to do the math here. Nearly 50 years later, I guess, from no. 63 to 2014. Really? He comes back in a, fin- in a uh, Fantastic Four issue. Oh, my goodness. But this is after... Uh, Johnny Storm has died. All his skin is sloughed off. Well, no, he's in the suit, but Johnny Storm has died. Mm. And he's afraid that people are going to forget him since they're going to forget about the Human Torch. Wait, Johnny Storm? Not Johnny Storm. Blaze. Uh, sorry, thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I was like, wait, did I miss? No, 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 no. no. Johnny was a storm yeah. gonna blaze. Yeah. Um, Sounds like a weather. So he Johnny decides storm. to go out and commit another crime, so mm-hmm. people will remember asbestos man. Sure. But he robs. Uh, he decides to rob a convenience store. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And yeah, it leads to. Uh, here, I'll give you this because it's it's written up like that's the latest, oh the twenty fourteen. But um, he's the just clerk, like in a welding suit with a with a shield has, and a and a polo mallet. He is. He has an oxygen tank now, Mike, uh-huh. because he is a cancer survivor. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, so they have it where Please asbestos please. man does catch cancer from his asbestos suit. Please ignore my oxygen tank. I am a cancer survivor. <laughs> that's what every villain says. So that's what he says when he wow. tries to rob the like the store. It's kind of like a cheese shop thing. Uh, it's weird. A cheese shop. Well, as you can see, like there's a ch- cheese on the oh, back of the dude, no. and then over here in the corner. Like there's yeah, uh, there's wheels of cheese, but there's slices missing from the wheels of cheese. Yeah, and then too. they just put them right back on the shelf. That's weird. Yeah, you'd think they would cover it up somehow, but mm, open uh, cheese. The uh, I think it's also that the clerk is more scared of the fact that he's wearing asbestos than mm-hmm. actually of him yeah. himself. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, so as, asbestos That's man's crazy. still trying to, uh, I guess, secure his uh, place in history. Yeah. Even after losing to the Human Torch. So I just thought... <laughs> and to cancer. Yeah, and to... Well, no, he beat cancer. Oh, that's right. Uh, cancer is the only thing that the best, as, asbestos man has bested. Wow. Um, <laughs> so that was the first one. So he used one. to carry a big net, it looks like. Yes, in the first... Yeah, in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, he had a net, and it was more of a, like, pinkish suit. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, though, still... He's creepy looking, I know that. Yeah. That's great. Good for him. Uh, that he's creepy looking? Yeah. Okay, then I yeah. I mean, because if you're going to be a, a a bad guy, I mean, you need to be creepy looking. Right? Well, that is true. Like, you want to strike. I mean, uh, you did a good job. Fear into the heart of people. Yeah. So, Mike, that was. Asbestos, man. That's, that's fantastic. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What have I stumbled across here? What is that? Oh, I don't know. Asbestos lady. Oh, I have read about her, okay. but I mean, I haven't. We're not done with asbestos. Oh, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm I can't sorry. just Go give ahead. you all the asbestos characters at once, Mike. Okay. No, I don't really know. Like I've I read like I would come across stuff of hers yeah. when I was looking up him. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't dove into Asbestos. So lady. Asbestos Man and uh, uh we're teasing a Asbestos Lady. Yeah. Eventually. So now Mike, you we're going to, to we're <laughs> No. No. We're going to travel to the eighties. Okay. For our next one. All right. Sweet for spot. A little book that we've talked about before. Just the situation in general mm-hmm. of Doom Patrol. Okay, Doom Patrol. Now this is the 1987 issue number 70. Okay, of Doom Patrol. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. Uh, everybody watch your Doom Patrol. <laughs> so uh, this, uh, I'll just for the whole issue. It's uh, Rachel Pollock, Scott Eaton, and Tom Sutton. Okay. So this is written by a woman, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. And you'll see why. Because, I suppose so, sure. Well, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just don't know yet. It makes sense to me that it would take a woman to kind of create a character like this because mm-hmm. I don't think a man would. Okay. Uh, and I think, obviously, it's made to be ridiculous. Estrogen in a point. gal. <laughs> no, Mike. Uh, well, first of all, the cover looks like uh, the Peter Gabriel music video for Sledgehammer. In a way. Oh, wow. Yeah, it kind of does. Oh, my Lord. What are we looking at there? Right? So, doesn't it? This guy has... Wow. He's, like, covered in metal. He's, like, a like kind of like a robot suit wow. in a way. And all the girls... Will you notice, Mike? Where are all the girls looking at, though? Oh, they're looking right down at his... Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at his what's, back. Really? Well, they're kind of. Yeah, they're kind of behind him, but it's made to be like he's cut off at the waist. You know what it looks like? It looks like uh, weird science almost. It gives a weird, weird science-y science vibe, but with girls. The TV show or the movie? Oh, God, don't mention the TV show. I watched the TV show what for a little bit. was the TV bit. show? Was it based on It was movie? on USA, yeah. Oh, no, that couldn't have been good. Uh, isn't Robert Downey Jr. in the original Weird Science? Ye- or is it Can't yeah, Buy Me Love? I'd he's in one of those two. Yes, maybe. That'll work. I don't know. So I don't remember. We're going to talk about a man, Mike, who is on the cover that we don't know his real name. Okay, he's not given a real name. We know him by his supervillain alter ego. Okay, but we have to set up 
the super villain alter ego. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is just a great one. Yeah. So it all starts with this guy in high school. Okay. And I'm not going to read all of this verbatim, but it just at least the very first conversation. So you see where this starts from. All right. So this guy, it just says high school, walks mm-hmm. up to this girl and says, why won't you go out with me? What's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. And the girl replies, um, you're, you're not big enough. <laughs> and he says, okay. how could she, like, they walk away, her and her friend walk away, and yeah. it's a thought bubble. And he yeah. goes, how could she know that? It's not my fault. I was just born that way. Oh, my God. And the girls say, <laughs> her friend goes, oh, my goodness, Kathy, what did you say to him? And she goes, oh, I don't know that he was too short or something, like, or so, that she was too short or something like that, anything to get away. So she was talking about him being too short. His mind immediately went, went to, his, to Johnson. his Johnson. Yeah, he was like, that's too short. Then we go to college. Is that how you say it? Do you say it's too short? Uh, two she shorts a small, rapper, didn't she? She said too small. Oh, okay. or, no, no, no. Right. She said you're not big enough. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but then we go to college, mm-hmm. and all you see another girl that he's talking to, and it's like I told you, we're breaking up. We're not a couple. We've only gone out three times, mm. and that's enough. And he says, "Is it because I'm too small? That's it, isn't it?" <laughs> and she goes, "Because you're what?" And he goes, "Again, I, I'm going to read these verbatim." Uh, if some of the language in here is... Is this just like small wiener man? Is that what is that what we're talking about? We're getting to this, Mike. <laughs> but I have to set up the backstory to show you what leads right, him to okay, his life of okay, crime. Right. He's just like, you do this all the time, don't you? Just drop someone because of the way he's made? Like, he's so hard up. <laughs> you do this all the time. And she just, she's leaving just exasperated, just like, oh my goodness, yeah, as she's leaving. Yeah. And he goes... Why don't you look at the real person for once? That's mm. what he's telling her is that she's leaving. Then we jump to adult life. And he has another run in with another lady. Yeah, he's got a he's got yeah, some now I will but we we've escalated to the point and he goes, I told or she goes, I told you, I just don't want to see you, okay? Will mm. you just leave me alone? Mm. So he's a creepy guy who keeps, sure. you know, Trying to hit on these ladies, and they want nothing to do with them. I'm average size. And he grabs her and goes, I know your type. I've known, again, I'm just reading verbatim. Sure. I've known bitches like you all my life. Wow. So he's already, yeah, great guy. You play with someone, and you just drop them when you find out he's not built the way you want. Oh, no. And she's just like, hey, let go of me to where a bouncer removes him. Micro penis man. Then we see him meeting with the doctor. This is also the first page of the comic. He's meeting with a doctor, and the doctor's like, uh, just to quote, he's like, "Yeah, there's some options that you have, sure. but I think what you need to focus on more is like, um, I think you need hey, to see yeah, a therapist. Yeah, your brain, yeah, your and, brain is bad. Yeah, he's son. like, maybe you need to go for counseling and said that that would help more instead of fixing yeah. the physical problem. Sure. And he goes, counseling. I've come to you for help, and you tell me to get my head shrunk. <laughs> It'll match your. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He goes, what are you saying? I should get my head made small enough to fit the rest of me. Is that oh, your idea? Oh my goodness! So it's like this he's guy. just over. Then it's like him paying. Then we jump to just three months ago. Go to his house. And and what is it? A house. The John Holmes collection on VHS. And there's, well, there's a uh, sex worker who's like, hey, it's okay if you're like this. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Sex worker. Well, I was just trying to, like, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And she goes, but she's super sweet. She's like, you know, it takes all kind. Sex you worker with a heart of gold. Exactly. She's yeah. like, hey, so what if you're like that? It takes all kinds. Don't worry. <laughs> right. She's even just like, being a therapist for him like it's just you being in your head like it's all good and he's like oh yeah sure you know that really give you a good laugh yada 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 and she's like whatever man your money's good just yeah so what does he decide to do mike he comes up with an idea and i would like to introduce to you now (laughs) all right as his quote says all right you bastards get ready for hell cod pieces here (laughs) oh my god 
cod piece. Look at this. Is a Doom Patrol villain. This dude has a giant gun on his wiener. He who has made a penis gun. Wow. It is like a cannon that fits like a cod piece does. My God. Right at his waist. And so, then he's got an old transistor radio strapped to his chest. Yeah, he's got like, I, I don't know. crap. If you are listening to this, please look this guy up. Uh, so that you know after I read about. it, it was too funny not to. That is crazy. He has, uh, I would I would call it a penis gun, but that makes it sound like it sh- it's, sh- shoots penises or something. It's like a cannon coming out of his his wiener. Yeah. he It's, it's, it's where is the cod pieces? There's a gun there. Now, oh. he doesn't just shoot rockets, Mike. No? No, it doesn't. There's a scene where in the process of him, because uh, he's deciding to... He's gonna go rob a bank with his mm-hmm. with his junk mm-hmm. gun. Um, I'm gonna see how many euphemisms I can get. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn that off. Um, how many uh, weird puns I can get in there? Um, but uh, it makes total he sense decides that this is a to DC go. Guy. Yeah, no, and uh, I, you, you get what I'm saying now when I say that it makes sense that a, yeah that a woman wrote it because wow. a man would never write this character because some of them are just like I can't do that. And the laser coming out There's, of his crotch gun is is yellow. He has a laser. Too. Here's here's the thing: it just doesn't oh shoot guns. Lord. It's like a Swiss Army knife. For a cod piece. Sure it is. Because at one point, he has like a drill that comes out of it to drill no, into a bank vault. No. Uh, a security guard comes up to stop him, Mike. Oh, my God. An older I'm, security guard. Somebody made a custom action figure. Yeah, they did. Wow. An older security guard comes up to stop him, and he oh, uses a no. boxing mitt out of it. No. He punches him right in the face with his wiener gun. With wow. his wiener mitt. Uh, that so is crazy. Uh it just looks like nobody can stop Codpiece. I mean, he's just running wild, uh-huh. lasers and like drills and boxing gloves. Well, um, it is Doom God. Patrol. There is a uh, girl on the team at the time of this name, uh, Coagula is her name. Now, basically, when she touches something and then says Coagula, it all everything like melts and dissolves. Right? That's her sure, power. Sure. So she catches him off guard through the crowd of people. She's wearing a frog mask because she doesn't have her costume with her. And she like sneaks up to him and she's like, oh, hey, you know, that's a pretty impressive gun you got there kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, she basically touches the cod piece. Yeah. It's touches the cod piece and says coagula and it dissolves away. Oh, no. So cod piece. Who's like, ah, oh, finally I've overcome everything. Oh my yeah, God. they can't say that to me now. Well, it, yeah, that's her and her frog mask. She has a frog mask on. You're she, just the most amazing man I've ever met. You're so big and so powerful. I've never seen anyone like you. And says. so he's like taken back by this because he's never got that before. But yeah, uh, she just touches it, says it, it swells up and explodes. <laughs> so <laughs> this is so stupid. It is. So cod wow. piece. Cod piece is um, gone. Yikes. But not forgotten, Mike, because I read uh, this week. Uh, I think it's the new Catwoman series. Yeah. They're going to have Cod piece in it? No, 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 no. But oh. here's the thing, too. I didn't realize this. I think it's the new Catwoman series. Yeah. Snowflame has made an appearance in oh, it. Oh, my goodness. And they found Cod piece's gun. Oh, they're no. listening to our show, Mike, and they're <laughs> actually putting it all in Catwoman. <laughs> but not him himself, but the cod piece weapon uh, has made an appearance this I just, year. I just love this one cover that you started I do too. with. Well, because it, it reminds me of the Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer it's, music video. It, it's just very much, 80s? I mean, yes, it, it is 1,000% 80s cover. This is from 1987. And the dude just has so much, so, so much uh, electronics or it's like he's, it, it, these are what fuses. Yeah, I guess. And a big dial and oh my God. Yeah. And they're all supposed to be staring. This is crazy. That is junk. How does, how does a national publication put this out? That's nuts. Well, wow. Look at that. Here's yeah. the inside of the codpiece. Yeah. So wow. there you go. That was the it's two. 
Do you see why I called it the double feature of Dumbass right now? Yeah. So yeah. that was our two with Asbestos Man and Codpiece. I love Codpiece. Uh, yeah. That is my favorite. So I think I'm going to find you. I'm just, I want to get you a poster of just that. It's also called The Laughing Game for some reason. The Laughing Game. Or the main one that you find, oh, like really? the inside cover, hmm. like when he finally shows himself to everybody. Um, like after he's finished the canon kind of thing. See yeah. here, if you zoom in, they call it the laughing game for some reason, like the story title itself. Oh, wow. Huh. So I'm just going to get you that poster there, Mike, yeah, of that I'd page. I'd love to have that. I, that would be posted everywhere around here. I would just carry it around with me. Yeah, right. So it just says today. Tell the story of Cod All Peace right, you bastards, get ready for hell. Cod Peace is coming, and we can just hang it up here in the yeah, uh, that'd be great. studio. So that's what I that's what I had today. Good God. This is those two. So Cod Peace and Asbestos Man. That is the most over-the-top person you've ever talked about. Like, like I mean, we've talked about these guys that all of a sudden can just fly and, you know, guys that just learned a language or whatever. I mean, <clears throat> but to this guy with a gun shooting out of his junk, that's just that's well, the one to way me, again, over the top. I feel sorriest for out of everybody in that, that issue, mm-hmm. the one issue he's in, mm-hmm. for the old security guard that gets punched yeah, with the exactly. boxing glove. Yeah, Because it just looks embarrassing in guy. general. Yeah. He's like, hey, you can't go. Oh, uh, what happened? Got I got I got punched with this with this punched thing. Punched with this junk. <laughs> junk punch. Junk punch. <laughs> junk punch to the face. Junk punch. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> uh, that's uh, this week's episode. That was great, though. I really enjoyed both of them. Yeah. I, yeah, you started with uh, the other one, and and but uh, I mean, this is a cod piece show. Oh, it is. This is all about this cod is piece. all cod piece. The only thing is, is I would have loved to have like a more full, like a longer story, but we don't have any like background no, on them. No. We just have the one issue. Well, we we know his background. I mean, yeah, we do. Yeah. He just he uh, not not that I'm speaking for myself. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I again uh, also <laughs> take this time out to remember that maybe don't always take things how people say them the way that you mm. i don't know i tried to make that sound like there was a life lesson in there sure i think there is a life lesson in there of just maybe don't get hung up don't, don't focus on, the on little your junk. things yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry that was a bad one don't get hung up on the little things don't right. get and you know what if you don't like your junk that's fun he was i mean just don't become a super villain he's definitely a shower <laughs> Oh, man. All right. That has been this episode. Uh, that was really good, though, man. Uh, I really enjoyed you. that. Thank yeah, that was you. Cool. Uh, that was cool. Well, then, you enjoyed it so much, if you don't mind. Uh, I have another two. Um, I feel like I could squeeze off. <laughs> that was weird terminology. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, next week I can do the same thing. I have these characters that I come across that, again, I think are hilarious. Yeah. No, I love it. But they're small. So we'll do another double feature on next week's episode, too. But there oh, cool. you go. This week it was Cod Piece and uh, Asbestos Man. Yeah. So uh, I'll have two more for you to look at next week if you they want need to. to team up together and both of their junk just falls off. W- why would Asbestos? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense now. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, bros, foes, heroes. Email us at bros, foes, he and said, heroes at gmail.com. He said, why would they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. He had, I mean, <laughs> asbestos. Sure. I had to think about it for a second. Yep. I don't know if it causes things to fall off, but mm. there you go. So Man made leprosy. That is uh, what we had. We appreciate you always tuning in. Sure. And giving absolutely. us a listen. If so, hopefully it's entertaining enough. We have fun doing this. So give us a big electronical thumbs up if yes. you would. With a like or a subscribe or, or whatever. Yeah, even if you just want to, you know, leave a comment with your five star review and be like, that would be nice. Uh, Cod piece is the best. I don't even God. care if you want to do that. That's fine. Cod piece is what uh, I based my life on. <laughs> yeah. Please get uh, that mental help if you need it. Yeah, <laughs> Let me just say yeah. that. Yeah, uh, that that part aside, like obviously we're not making fun of the uh, 
the, the, the problems that he well he no, the way he are. went about we it. I'm we are. All of it. Well, yeah. no, no, we yeah. are too because this character is written in a way where it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, he's mm-hmm. not a guy that doesn't want to try to help right. himself as he's much. He's not as, like you don't see a lot of scenes of him fighting demons or anything no, in his head. You know? No, he's just already accepted that everybody's it's not kind exactly of against Tony him Stark here. Yeah, I don't know if Tony Stark had to wrestle with those same demons. It wasn't brought up in any of the movies, so mm-mm, maybe mm-mm. it was a deleted scene. And the, it, you, when I think about the Iron Man suit, it's not you know like bigger in areas yeah that's true <laughs> what if he did like what if it was a regular size suit and then it was just like a <laughs> just little a giant pod kit. either one very small or yeah, very big it's kind of like you know he's just like, like creating a bulge kind of just to stand like sure. he, you know and he's just like hey hey black widow hot, yeah yeah hot dog in a hallway comes <laughs> comes to mind <laughs> oh man All sorry right. guys well that's it. That was Cod Peace and Asbestos, man. That was great. So, uh, again, as always, we appreciate you listening. Uh, and make sure to tune in next week. We got some more fun coming your way. Do it, do it, do it. Gullicon! Frozen! Frozen! Heroes! Gonna tell you about Frozen! Frozen! Heroes! Gonna tell you about This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.